I just finished this 2011 book by Colin Woodward called American Nations, a history of the 11 rival regional cultures of North America. The book is largely focused on trying to understand how North American politics works today, based on emigration and settlements of different pre-colonial cultural and religious groups. That history has a real application to genealogy, at least the part where we try to understand who our ancestors were, what they believed, and how they lived their lives. Quick summary. First, it doesn't matter where people came from. They became acculturated to the environment in which they lived their lives. Two, people just didn't migrate to places in the United States where friends and family already lived. They even migrated west within their cultural groups. Third, Woodward has this really cool map of settlement patterns that can help you understand your ancestors' culture based on where they lived. And fourth, this map can help you make educated guesses about where to look for records as you move back in time. It's these last two that I find fascinating and that I think makes Woodward's book a great purchase. Now, Woodward posits that North America has 11 distinct cultural groups or nations, with nine of them predating the revolution. I won't go through them all, read the book, but in my wife's family, there were really just four. One, the Tidewater, an aristocratically inclined nation centered around the Chesapeake Bay. Two, Yankeedom, a communitarian, utopian-inspired culture founded by New England Puritans. The Midlands, a moderate, pluralistic, pacifist nation with Philadelphia Quaker roots. Greater Appalachia, a libertarian-inclined nation founded by Scots-Irish settlers in the colonial backcountry. What's fascinating to me is that the borders between these nations actually match to different branches in my wife's family tree. And I can almost always point to a particular event where these two nations crossed. First, take a look at Ohio. Woodward has this state split between three nations, Yankeedom, Appalachia, and Midlands. My wife's maternal line has a lot of Ohio in it. Some Midlands Pennsylvania Dutch, some Appalachian Scotch Irish. For more than a century, both families moved west, but within the boundaries Woodward maps out in his book. The Scots-Irish line moved from the Virginia backcountry, what is West Virginia today, through Appalachian Kentucky, then Appalachian Southern Ohio, and finally Appalachian Southern Indiana and Illinois. My wife's Pennsylvania Dutch family went west through Pennsylvania to Midlands Northern Ohio. So how did the two families cross? Well, one branch of the Scotch-Irish line ended up in Illinois, along what Woodward asserts was smack on the Appalachian Midland border, and then went to Midland, Iowa. There, they met up with a branch of that Midland family that had gone all over Midland's territory, from Kansas to Iowa to Nebraska. Still, my wife's maternal line is exclusively Midlands and Greater Appalachia. My wife's paternal line? Until the 1840s, there were really six distinct lines. Three were Yankee, one dating back to the Mayflower, and another two that were acculturated in existing Yankee communities in New Brunswick and Western New York. The fourth was pure Appalachian. The last two were ethnic German, one 100% Pennsylvania Dutch from colonial times. The others were relatively recent Germans who immigrated from Russia. These six lines had absolutely no geographic overlap until the mid-1800s. What brought them together? It was the Oregon Trail. Between 1843 and 1900, each branch went overland to Oregon, where they finally intermarried. I hope you enjoyed this five minute genealogy video. If you have any questions or suggestions for future video topics, please leave them in the comments. If you like my channel, please subscribe and give a thumbs up.